Hey everyone, it's Liz from blueandhazel.com and welcome to my homeschool channel. If you are new here, um, I'm a homeschool mom of four kids and my oldest is 10 in fourth grade and my youngest is two and a half. And so we're schooling three kids right now, but um, this is just a space where I love to share like what's working in our homeschool and what's not working. I, well, I love seeing a sneak peek into other people's homeschool lives and so I'm hoping that this is that for you. Um, in today's video, what I wanna show you is what's inside of our math homeschool box. now. This has grown slowly, so don't feel like everything you see today that you need to just go run and buy. I don't think you do, and I would um, actually not buy things until you actually need them. We are using Math with Confidence with my year one and three, and then for my fourth grader, we have um, him on Singapore Math Primary 2022. Now, the programs have actually used a lot of the same hands-on pieces, and so these have um, gotten their money's worth in my opinion because we've passed them down from using them with my oldest to my second now my third is in first grade and then my fourth will come up and use these again um, the problem that I see with math manipulative pieces is one is that there's just like a lot of pieces so you kind of need some ideas on how to keep them contained and the other thing I would recommend is just keeping the ones handy that you need close by so that during a lesson you don't feel like you're flailing around looking for the dice or flailing around trying to find the deck of cards in your junk drawer. Just kind of having some place where you can keep them real quick and grab um, the things that you use the most often. So um, just as an example to show you, um, I got this big square bin at Target and I like it because it fits in one of those cube shelves that we have. And um, so we have actually two of those cube shelves and um, six of these bins and so one of these is my homeschooling math bin and um, I will show you everything that I keep inside of that math bin and I will say the most um, regularly used container that I have within that math bin is this little box and this comes out almost every single day with my first grader because he's in the years where he's doing a lot of um, hands-on pieces learning his addition facts and subtraction and everything that we do has some kind of hands-on component. Um, that's especially true with Math with Confidence. This is kind of where I've kept all of his stuff. Um, he'll probably use this all the way to second grade and then in, into third grade, which my daughter's doing. She's not really using any of these anymore, um, except for like the deck of cards and maybe some dice. Right, so, so the first thing that I have is just a deck of cards and that is to play often um, math games that are included in Math with Confidence. You could also look up other math games that use just a deck of cards. It's a the next thing that I have in here is um, these kind of random cards that we have made with Math with Confidence. This might be specific to our curriculum, not what you're using. So you may not even you know have anything like this, but I basically bought these blank playing cards on Amazon. Um, I'll link those in the description if you want something like this. In addition to that, we've had to make cards 11 through 20 and my son wanted to do this. Um, he drew little pictures on each one. One thing that has helped when these cards get kind of um, scrambled up is that I know one through 10 cards are all in red and my 11 through 20 cards are in a different color. So if you are using Math with Confidence and you haven't yet made your cards, keep that in mind. I have a handful of real coins. I don't know if you can see those. We play store like for some of our math activities and things like that. So it's nice to have real money. Um, I just prefer it to the fake, you know, dollar store money that's plastic. I think it's nice to have like real coins. Um, however, for the cash bills, um, I'm not going to use real money for that <laughs> because I don't carry that much cash. And so um, anyways, these are free to print off and I will put that website in the description for you. But I got these on um, like a government website where they have like, like educational printout. The next thing that I would highly recommend buying um, for your math kit as you progress through elementary is a base 10 kit. So here we have the, um, the hundreds blocks, here's the thousands block. And then in this little tiny kit, it has the 10 blocks and it has the one blocks in there. This is actually something that I can pull out quickly. And we use often when we're going over like, you know, um, putting little counter pieces on the tin frame, or if we're playing a game and I need, you know, little pieces to put on a board, I just grab these out and that works really well. I also have some black beans in here on the bottom because oftentimes it'll say, 
you know, player one has one color of counters and player two can have a different color of counters. So we'll use like the yellow and black beans. We use these for all my kids across both curriculums. And I think that this has been really helpful for place value. Um, I also got this board that um, we have used. I wouldn't say that we use this all the time, but I feel like it's come in handy during a short period of time when we're trying to really visualize place value. And so um, this board is thick cardboard. It's very nice because you can um, use dry erase on it or you can, you know, place your, um, you can place your green sticks on there and um, your yellow cubes on there and it just matches up really nicely. So. Um, this is not something, like I said, that we use a ton, but when we need it, it is very helpful, especially if you're like trying to visually see adding up the ones and adding up the tens. Another item that's in the math box that actually does get used quite a lot, all the way from preschool when they're just learning like shapes and colors and, you know, dumping these out to make designs on the floor to also like part of his math curriculum where you have to create certain designs or, you know, make a design that is symmetrical. Or... And I have these like little cube counters that um, have 10 of each. And so these are really nice for the early years, I'd say like kindergarten, first grade, probably when, you know, you need to visually show what happens when you add eight of one and two of another. So we have a ruler that just comes in handy with each year for a few weeks. And I have um, kind of brand brand new, this is new to us, we've been using these with my third grader. She's just starting fractions. And my fourth grader is also reviewing some fractions. Um, but these have been really nice because it kind of fulfills that visual aspect of you know, seeing how one half is also equal to two fourths. We have used them a few times during her fraction unit. We'll probably use them again in fourth grade as she covers fractions again. Okay, so next up I wanna show you a few of the homeschool printables that really don't take up much space, but that get used often in our homeschool and have been really, really helpful. So I keep these in their homeschool binder. Each of my kids has one just for their own stuff. First thing in here, and I've just stuck this inside of a plastic, um, slip cover here is a 10 frame and this is from the back of our math with confidence book but you can get these on their website for free to print out she also has the single 10 frame um, these are pretty easy to find online and this is super great for our curriculum both Singapore and math with confidence we use 10 frames all the time um, to try to visualize adding and subtracting numbers the next thing is um, in the back of our math with confidence um, curriculum as well and this is just the master chart for the hundreds chart. I also have a part total mat and we use this all the time with my first grader right now. He's learning about number bonds and number families. And so this is a really great um, printable that we take out pretty often actually. And then what we end up doing is um, grabbing our cards that we made and so that we can create these number bonds um, just with these cards. Next, I have a printable clock. And I love this clock because um, it's just very hands-on. It's visual. You can see the numbers. You can count by fives. This is one of the ways that we begin skip counting by fives and learning the clock that way. Um, it has an hour hand, minute hand, and then you can... Um, as a parent, you can write in the time um, right here and they can set the clock or you can set the clock and have them write the time. Um, so you can find this in my Etsy shop. I've used this with all of my kids and I find it to be a really valuable resource. Um, the next thing that is also in my Etsy shop and I have also used with all my kids and right now my first grader is using this is a number tracing um, sheet. And so um, this download actually comes with like a dinosaur version and then a ladybug version because I knew my daughter was not gonna want to do dinosaurs. So I made her a ladybug one. But basically they just follow the dinosaur. You can have them trace with their fingers and then next you can have them use dry erase markers. And um, that goes all the way one through 10 with room to write out the numbers as well. And then um, there's part of that same download is a smaller version of the numbers. Even with Math with Confidence at the kindergarten level, they had the kids start writing these small numbers, like, you know, half if not 
even smaller than half of this size and my son just couldn't do it his hands were not developed for that and he hadn't practiced writing his numbers and so um we just paused that and we came to these nice big ones and that's how he learned how to form those shapes and then eventually he could get them small enough and that is pretty much everything within my math box i do have a couple of little games inside of my math box i want to show you as well as a few of the bigger, bulkier games that we use in our homeschool to learn math facts. Okay, so first one is Tiny Polka Dot. This is one of my favorites because it grows with the kids and they have different math games in here for different ages. And my little guy started playing this when he was like four. He did the easy ones. Um, as he got older and those were too easy, we bumped it up and went to the games in here that were a little like age five and up and then six and up. So it really does grow with them. And I highly recommend this, um, especially if you just need to like cancel math for a day, you could just pull this out and do it instead. Okay, so another one of my favorites, I won't really go into how to play it too much, but it's called Quicks. And we've played this with my daughter from like second grade, third grade, and we can play it with my son who's in fourth grade. I like it. So really like probably second grade and up, I think for this one, but um, the kids are rolling these dice and they have this number board right here and so they're constantly every single roll adding up these dice combinations and then at the very end um, they're using a little bit of strategy i guess along the way but at the very end they're also having to add up all of their points from red all of their points from yellow green and blue they have to subtract their penalty points so it's just like a really sneaky awesome way to you know get some math practice okay, so ic10 is another one that we've had in our collection for a while and i've used it with the kids probably around um, late kindergarten through first grade. And then after that, once they know their ones, their combinations of one through 10, it gets a little boring. But this is a really great way to start to make those combinations of like three and seven, two and eight, you know, five and five um, to really get that down. Um, another small game that we found and I'm a big fan of is Zeus on the Loose. And I like it because it doesn't take up a lot of space. <laughs> and um, the cards, um, what you're doing, we don't always play the game as many rounds as it says to, um, but you have these cards here and um, you're adding up, each each player gets you know a certain number of cards in their hand and then on your turn, you have to try to add one of your cards to the pile on the floor and so you have to add up that number. So if there's a five on the floor and you put a six down, then you're gonna say 11. Um, if there's an 11 and you get a nine and you put it on the pile, then you're going to say 20. And so you're constantly adding up until you get to a hundred and there's a little bit of strategy, but a lot of addition. Okay. So the next one up that I really like is math magical world. This one is a favorite of my first grader. He got it for his birthday. So he feels like it's his game and we play this just for fun, not just like on a math day. And, um, it just has all sorts of cool pictures and slides and arrows and, you know, skip ahead and go behind and, um, it has even an odd practice and it, it'll it have things like go ahead um, half of six. So they have to figure out how many is half of six and then they get to go that many. So it, it's got some little twists in there. It has a little tornado that you can get stuck in. They just really like it. It also has a couple set of dice so you can use bigger numbers or add smaller numbers. And then it has one for addition and subtraction. So you never know on your roll if you're gonna have to add numbers or subtract numbers. Okay, so that's everything that I have in my math kit for you. And I'd love to know if you have any questions about math curriculum or math pieces. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out my other math videos. I'll leave in the description for Math with Confidence and Singapore if you're interested in those.